Modifications to a Stuart Beam Engine, Part 3. Mounting the beam engine on a nice new oak base. This is not as simple as it looks, owing to some minor dimensional errors between the engine block base and the pedestal. The real problem is the pedestal is slightly too long and the bottom of it needs machining to shorten it slightly. However, owing to the fact that I am one kidney light on the right hand side and still suffering from post-operative stress or pain, I really do not fancy going up to the main workshop and milling the bottom of the pedestal. And I don't want to fit a steel plate underneath the main engine bed plate on top of the wooden block because at one end the bed plate is far too close to the edge anyway. Necessity is always the mother of invention, so this seems to be quite a good idea. When the engine's main block base is sat on this card, the height of the pedestal is just where it needs to be. So I thought to myself, why not use the piece of card? And here I am, marking it out, ready for cutting and drilling. I don't want the piece of card to go right to the edge of the wooden base because you could see it. And what I may do is put like a skirting board around the main block. The piece of card started off being exactly the same size as the base. So I've drawn some lines on it about a quarter of an inch in, so when it's finally mounted in place underneath the wooden block, you will not be able to see it. And the block will appear to be floating in space. Please keep watching, you will get the idea of what I'm about to do. I need to drill four holes in this piece of card to act as a template and a guide to then drill four holes in the main baseboard. And here, using my small workshop scissors, which may be very pretty, but are very sharp, I'm cutting out the piece of card accurately all the way round. I'm doing this freehand, and it's surprisingly easy because the card is thick enough to support itself. If this was thinner card, I would be cutting all over the place. In order for me to function and do a good job, what I'm working on really does have to be rigid. If I hadn't become a musician and a studio engineer and a computer engineer, I could have been a mortician, because generally speaking, dead bodies are quite rigid and don't move about much. Anyway, that's enough talking about dead bodies for one episode. I have successfully accurately cut out the piece of card, and as you can see in this clip, I've marked four points where I need to drill four holes. At the same time, I'll be drilling holes down into the baseboard. And to help prevent drilling holes into the bench, I'm putting the mahogany on its side. Here we go with the small drill. This is, of course, a Proxon Minimot motor tool, a rechargeable version. Initially, I drilled the holes an eighth of an inch in diameter, and now it's time to open them up to three sixteenths of an inch in diameter. I do need a little bit of tolerance here. 3 sixteenths of an inch is perfect to allow the wood screws a little bit of movement if necessary. I won't be able to screw the block that supports the engine to the baseboard in one go. What I'll need to do is pilot the holes in the block to take the wood screws. What I'm doing in this clip is using a larger twist drill to deburr the top of the oak base. To make this job successful, I cannot have burrs either on the baseboard or underneath the wooden block that the engine sat on or even on the piece of card. I've also used the same size twist drill to countersink the underside of the board to take the heads of the wood screws. I'm checking the alignment of the piece of card and the good news is it's fine. Although I'm really not happy with the burrs around the holes that are drilled in the piece of card. They'll be okay for now, and here, as you can see, I'm drilling holes into the wooden block from underneath. These holes are not 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, they're a good bit less. These are pilot sized holes for the wood screws. For some reason in this clip, I could not find where the hole was underneath. But anyway, I got there in the end. 
I drilled four shallow pilot holes, which really needed to be deeper. So here, once again using the pilot size drill bit, I'm making the holes a bit deeper. What I need to do before I can continue any further is apply some varnish to the board. Untreated oak is really not very good for steam engine baseboards because the water makes it turn black. And for this reason I need to give the main baseboard quite a good coat of polyurethane varnish. Notice that I still have the line drawing on my right arm and this was from when, just before the operation, I queried the surgeon and said you're definitely sure you're taking the right kidney out, aren't you? Which he seemed to find very funny and drew a picture on my arm to explain to me so when I came round from the anaesthetic I would realise that he'd taken the right one out. I haven't bothered washing the line drawing off because when I look at it, it makes me smile. I never recommend using cheap rubbish in the tool department and this paintbrush is no exception, it's really good. I'm using oil-based Ron Seal hard glaze polyurethane varnish and this brush is applying it really well. I think one coat should be enough, I don't want it to look really shiny because the engine's main mounting block isn't shiny. Normally I would use a lint-free cotton cloth to apply the varnish to a board like this but I wanted to try this paintbrush out and I'm pleased to say it is excellent. It's really important to make sure that you don't miss any parts of the board so I'm double checking as I go to make sure that I'm getting 100% coverage with the polyurethane varnish. Here's the usual gratuitous shot of the varnish drying and once the varnish had fully dried here's the top tip time. I need to make sure there are no burrs whatsoever on anything at all and that includes this piece of card and the best way to do that is to first of all drill the holes to the size you need them which are a bit bigger than I need them to be and then use a blowtorch to burn away the burr. Finally in this episode I'm using the 1896 engine that I'm going to be rebuilding shortly just to make sure that the card is perfectly flat on the board. And that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.